Hi dear students, a warm welcome to all of you. The topic that we are going to see is Biomechanics in Orthodontics. So Biomechanics is a simple and very interesting chapter and very easy to understand. And this portion is little vast so we have divided it into small, smaller sessions and today we are going to focus on the concept of center of resistance in Biomechanics. So to begin with, what is the mechanics? The mechanics is a branch of physics which deals with the behavior of the physical bodies when subjected to the force or the displacement. Then what is biomechanics? So let us split up the term bio plus mechanics. So the mechanics which is applied on the biological entity, it is called as biomechanics, right? So for any biomechanical aspect, the common terminology would be the force. So what is a force? A force is a vector which causes an object in space to change its place or shape. So it is a vector having characteristics of the line of action, direction and magnitude and most importantly it will have a point of application as well. Right. So coming to properties of the force. So the properties of the force in orthodontics are it will have a point of application, it will have a line of action, a magnitude and sense. So these four are the main properties of the force in orthodontics. Okay, the question from this picture would be the arrow head of the line of action, what it denotes? It tells about the direction where the teeth is getting displaced. So this is the meaning for the arrow head in case of line of action. And what is the magnitude? Any force will have a quantity, right? Like 10 newtons or 20 newtons. So this is the magnitude and what is the point of application? So in orthodontics, orthodontics, orthodontics we will be moving a tooth from one place to another for that we should apply the force on a tooth at a point. So that point is called as a point of application, right? Since we keep talking about the force, let us get to know how much amount of force has to be applied to in order to have effective and safe orthodontic tooth movement. So the answer is 20 to 26 grams per centimeter square of root surface. So this is the ideal force that has to be applied in order to have effective and optimum ortho orthodontic tooth movement. And this value is somewhere equal to our capillary blood pressure. So these two are very important MCQ. So the value is 20 to 26 grams per centimeter square of root surface and this value is equal to our capillary blood pressure non-systolic or diastolic. Right. Who gave the term the optimum orthodontic force? The credit goes to the gentleman called open him and Schwartz. These two gentlemen gave the term optimum orthodontic force for tooth movement. Right. Let us get to know some basics of biomechanics such as we have a center of gravity, center of mass, center of resistance and we also have center of rotation. Okay. The center of gravity and center of mass, these two are applicable for free falling object. So what is a free falling object? So when I drop this marker pen, it just falls down, right? It is not constrained or restrained by some other structures. So when I just drop, it just falls down, it just falls freely. So this is called free falling object. And any object will have a point where the entire mass is concentrated and that point is called as center of resistance or center of gravity and center of mass. Then what is the difference between these three? So in the center of gravity is applicable for the object which is free falling and that is under the influence of earth gravity. And what is center of mass? Center of mass is again a point where the entire mass is concentrated for a free falling object. The difference is the this object is not under the influence of gravity and such object will have a center of mass. Okay, then what is the center of resistance? So the same thing is applied to a dentition which is having a point where the entire mass is concentrated but a dentition of or our teeth is not a free falling object it is constrained or restrained by the surrounding periodontal housings such as pedial fibers, gingival fibers and alveolar bone. So 
so the center of resistance is similar to center of gravity or center of mass but it is applicable for an object which is not free falling so which is not free falling that's why the center of gravity and center of mass is changed to center of resistance in case of human dentition okay then what is center of rotation it is a point where the object can rotate for example if i hold a point my pen here it can rotate like in this manner in pendulum direction whereas if i hold the pen at the center it can rotate around this point so that is called center of rotation an important thing to notice a center of resistance is constant that is center of resistance is constant whereas center of rotation is variable so this is very important to note that center of resistance can never be varied because it is a point where the entire mass is concentrated where center of rotation is a point which can be varied depending upon the type of tooth movement we have so center of resistance is constant and center of rotation is variable okay now from from this point onwards we will be talking only about center of resistance because we are going to talk about biomechanics on the dentition okay what is center of resistance it is a point where the line of action of the force vector intersects the long axis of the tooth thereby causing the translation or bodily movement of a tooth what it exactly means so we have a tooth here and we are having a long axis of the tooth and when we are having a line of action intersecting the long axis of a tooth at the center of resistance we should be having a bodily movement of a tooth without having any tilting or change to put in simple terms if we apply a force at the center of resistance of a tooth we will be having bodily movement that is when i push this pen at the center the pen will just move in straight manner whereas if i push this pen at the tip of the pen what happens the pen will move at the same way it will rotate as well and this rotational tendency is called as moment of a force so the concept of moment of a force will be dealt in a separate session just for brief discussion if i push if i apply a force at the center of this pen i will be having this pen moving in the same direction without any rotation whereas if i apply a force at a distance from the center of the pen what happens is the pen moves at the same time it rotates so that rotation tendency is called as moment of a force so the point or the point where the center of resistance is located and if you apply a force at that point you will have a translation or bodily movement so that is the idea right since we keep talking about the center of resistance we should get to know its precise location so according to dr profit the center of resistance for a tooth is at approximately midpoint of the embedded portion of the root it is at the embedded portion of the root from the root apex to the alveolar crest so the key point here to be noted is the root apex and crestal alveolar crestal bone so the center of resistance is located at the embedded portion of the root which is somewhere midpoint between root apex and alveolar crest right some other authors also suggested the location of center of resistance so dr profit and nikolai had told it is somewhere 50 percent of root length and dr smith and burson told it is the location it is located from 33 percent to 50 percent of the root length but basically the center of resistance is located at one third to one half of the root apical to the alveolar crest again the point to be noted here is the root apex and alveolar crest right is the location of center of resistance is same for single rooted tooth and, and multi rooted tooth no it is different for single rooted tooth it is somewhere midpoint or one third to one half from root apex to alveolar crest whereas in case of multi rooted tooth like molar it is somewhere closer to the furcation area right what happens in case of enter maxillary arch if we consider maxillary arch from molar to molar the center of resistance for that particular arch is will be located between the roots of premolar tooth then where is the location of center of resistance for enter maxilla it is located at posterior superior aspect of zygomatico maxillary suture according to author called starkly and tuster 
right okay the center of resistance has to be determined in three dimensional manner it is not a 2d criteria it is always a three dimensional manner so we should be looking the center of resistance for a particular tooth in three dimensional way okay so this is the buccal or lingual view so if you see a multi rooted tooth in buccal or lingual manner in three dimensional way we will be having three different views right this is facial aspect or lingual aspect this is proximal aspect and this is occlusal aspect so let us get to know where the center of resistance would be in these three situations so in case of facial or lingual aspect as we discussed before the center of resistance would be located somewhere close to the furcation area right in case of proximal that is mesial or distal view we will be having our center of resistance somewhere midway between the root length from root apex to alveolar crest right what happens when we see the molar from occlusal view where will be the center of resistance the center of resistance in such cases would be along the long axis of the molar so these three factors or these three dimensions shows the location of center of resistance in three separate dimensions as well right coming to some clinical scenario we will be having uh, different locations of center of resistance for different clinical scenarios for example if we have a molar which is not connected to any of the arches the location of center of resistance will be somewhere close to the furcation area as we know already and there are some situations where we will be connecting our molar to only central incisors and lateral incisors without including canine and premolars such mechanisms are called as bypass mechanisms in such cases the center of resistance will be located between second premolar and first molar right in case of the entire arch or full arch mechanism where we will be having brackets and wires in complete dentition in such cases the center of resistance would be between the roots of premolar tooth so these are different clinical scenarios where we will be having a location of center of resistance in different locations right we just studied about the consistency and the constant nature of center of resistance but there are some exemptions which will affect the location of center of resistance so the amount of alveolar bone height number 2 the root that is whether the root is resolved or root is normal so these two factors mainly affects the precise location of center of resistance let us get to know with pictorial representation so in case of ideal tooth where there is no bone loss and where there is no root resorption the center of resistance would be according to definition 1/3 to 1/2 of the root from the root apex to the alveolar crest so it will be somewhere here approximately right in case of bone loss where there is a period where there is a periodontal breakdown we will be having a root resorption right so we will be having bone resorption right so the height of alveolar crest will be reduced so as per the definition the center of resistance for such cases would be 1/3 to 1/2 from root apex to the alveolar crest so this is the importance of two key terminologies such as root apex and alveolar crest so now let us locate the center of resistance that is 1/3 to 1/2 from roots apex to alveolar crest so what happens compared to this scenario the center of resistance is shifted apically right okay let us get to know the next scenario where there is a root resorption so let us locate the center of resistance for this scenario again according to definition it is 1/3 to 1/2 of the root surface from root apex to the alveolar crest here since there is a root resorption the root apex will be shifted towards crown portion of the tooth so similarly the location of center of resistance also will be shifted towards crown portion so here the center of resistance is shifted coronally right very easy to understand right so the factors affecting the location of center of resistance are amount of alveolar height or the amount of alveolar crest and number 2 the amount of root resorption okay in case of ideal tooth it will be at the 1/3 to 1/2 of the root surface from root apex to alveolar crest in case of periodontal bone loss the center of resistance would shift apically and in case of root resorption 
the center of resistance would shift coronally. So these are the factors that affects the location of center of resistance. Okay, here we are having a special segment called Arden Flash, which summarizes what we have discussed at this point of time. So kindly have a look on this nutshell. So we just discussed about the properties of the force and we also discussed about what is the optimum force for orthorhonic tooth movement and who gave the terminologies, right? And we also saw about the location of center of resistance for single rooted tooth, multi rooted tooth and the entire maxilla and also we also learned about the location of center of resistance in three dimensional manner not only in 2D, right? And we also saw about different clinical scenarios like unconnected molar and molar which is connected only to central incisor and molar which is connected to the entire arch as well. And at last we discussed about the factors affecting the center of resistance. So there are two main factors which affect the center of resistance that is alveolar bone support and root resorption and also the number of roots as well. So a single rooted tooth will have one center of resistance and multi rooted tooth have different point of center of resistance. Right. Coming to some review questions we have now. So optimum orthodontic force according to Oppenheim Schwartz says, okay, we know the value 20 to 26 grams. So obviously we can eliminate the last option. Now we will be getting confused from A, B, C options. So it is always 20 to 26 grams per square centimeter. Okay. It is not square millimeter or it is not inches. So kindly focus on the units as well not only in the numbers so it is always square centimeter not millimeter or inches so this is the right option so in orthorhotic tooth movement in order to avoid injuries to the tissues the force should never exceed the capillary blood pressure it can never be systolic or diastolic or and there is no such thing called masticatory pressure as well so the answer is capillary blood pressure okay the center of rotation of a tooth depends upon all of the following except so kindly focus on the question here the question is the center of the rotation not the center of resistance so we know that the center of rotation is variable where center of resistance is constant so the center of rotation of a tooth depends upon all of the following so it depends on the length of the root yes the root length is reduced the center of resistance also gets changed and center of rotation also will get changed and what is mesodistal dimension of the tooth Mesodistal dimension of the crown doesn't have anything to do with the location of center of resistance or center of rotation. Okay. What is the length of supporting alveolar bone? Nothing but the height of alveolar crest. So yes, this is also a depending factor and type of tooth movement. Yes, for tipping we will be having one center of rotation and for talking we will be having different center of rotation. So the type of tooth movement also have the, has a change over the location of center of rotation. So the exempted answer would be mesodistal crown of the tooth doesn't have anything to do with the location of center of rotation. Right. The center of resistance for fully connected arch with the rigid arch wear is we just saw three clinical scenarios that is one unconnected molar that is independent molar and the molar which is connected with the incisor and the molar which is connected with the entire arch. So the answer is the in such cases the center of resistance will be located between the premolar tooth. So my dear friends I hope this session was very helpful and we saw the insights about the basics biomechanics the concept of center of resistance and where it is located for different tooth that is for single rooted tooth and multi rooted tooth. So in, in upcoming sessions we will see about different types of forces in biomechanics and we will also look upon moment to force ratio as well. So thank you have a happy learning.